After all, and that was definitely the case for me about two weeks ago when I picked up my first real vintage jump. Because uh, it was not only that, uh, but it was also a 1967 Super Reverb, which uh, has to be one of my dream amps. So this happened about two weeks ago, and uh, I had already listed uh, the amps that I had right now in order to gather some cash uh, to get uh, an old uh, Super Reverb amp. I had uh, ruled out uh, everything before 1970 because uh, here in Greece uh, it's really difficult to find one that plays well for a reasonable price. So I was looking mostly at stuff uh, at about 1974 to 1976 uh, and I was like, okay, it's not uh, the one I wanted, but uh, we can make this work. And uh, that Saturday, as I was searching through the listings, I so happened to see an ad for this amp that was uh, uploaded uh, that moment. Of course, uh, I knew that uh, everybody would uh, fly to buy this amp because it was listed at a really, really nice price. So I sent a message to the seller and uh, I hoped for the best, knowing very well that it was pretty difficult for me to get this amp. Somebody, I thought, uh, had already gotten to it. After a few hours I had already given up on the idea when I got a phone call. It was the seller who was asleep when I sent him the message and uh, who told me that uh, he had about 50 messages about this amp and uh, that he called me because I was the first one to leave a phone number. I couldn't believe it at first, so I quickly told him that I really, really wanted this amp and we made the deal. And after that I asked him if the electronics were original, if he knew what has happened to this amp, because of course the cabinet is not in its original form. He told me that everything was original and I thought okay. So the next day he sent it to me and while it was listed as a 1968 Super Reverb, when I searched the serial number, I found out uh, that it was a 1967 black line silver face uh, super reverb. That made me really happy because I knew that uh, the older it was, uh, the more the chances that it was the original AB763 circuit uh, and I wouldn't need to make uh, any mods to get uh, the sound that I wanted. Of course, the next step was to take the amp to my tech to see what has happened to it. 
amazingly, everything inside was original, along with the original caps and all that, uh, that were uh, really about uh, to give up, uh, although the amp played uh, reasonably well. And we checked and saw that uh, it really had the AB763 circuit in it. The fact that the electronics were untouched made me really happy, as well as the fact that it was a blackface circuit, because uh, I was a little bit uh, worried uh, because it looks like that. The work done on the cabinet was really not <laughs> that uh, good. I'm pretty sure they chopped off uh, the combo cabinet and uh, glued the bottom of it uh, to the top part uh, in order to make it into a head because it has the original finger joints on the top as well as in the bottom, but the bottom is glued. Yes, also they ripped the Tolex apart. The cosmetic part is uh, something that I'm not really sure what I want to do with, because on the one hand I would really love to restore it uh, and make it uh, seem uh, as it was supposed uh, to be, but on the other hand I feel like this cabinet has uh, its story and uh, I'm considering only making a new front for it uh, with grill cloth uh, that matches it. I don't know, if uh, you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. But yeah, I feel like, like the cabinet tells uh, the story of this amp, because uh, it must have been played a lot through the years. So after doing regular maintenance stuff so that it wouldn't blow up on me, I got it back here and uh, started playing with it. And uh, I have to say that uh, it's even more than what I expected from all the videos that I've seen from Matthew Scott and all the guys like that that uh, have a lot of vintage jams. It sounds amazing to my ears and uh, it is a really difficult amp to play. Right now I feel like I am not a good enough player to have such an amp, but uh, this is good in a way because it has made me determined to get better to get uh, the most out of it. Of course today all the samples are recorded through a pair of 12-inch uh, speakers by Weber, the Chicago series, that I bought for my Acousta Twin Reverb. But uh, the most exciting part is that uh, I am waiting to get uh, another Super Reverb, the 1976 that I was talking about in the start, uh, which has uh, the original CTS Alnico speakers in it, uh, and <laughs> yeah, it's a bit sudden, but I I've already tried that amp, and I'm happy that I found this one. Of course the 76 is also a great amp, but uh, this is the one that gives the sound that I had in my mind. What I care more for that amp is the speakers, and uh, I'm really excited to listen to uh, the 67 uh, with the CTS Alnico speakers. Anyway, that's all for today. There will be a follow-up uh, when uh, the other Super Reverb comes here. If you like this kind of videos, uh, consider subscribing. My name is Dalam and thank you very much for watching.